What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Wolf Click. I'm the 2016 Pokemon World Champion and today I'm going to be walking you guys through a guide to using the Pokemon that honestly I expect to have the most usage by the end of the season, probably throughout the season, uh, Landorus T. It's one of the most popular Pokemon in VGC when it's allowed. Uh, the, the exception to that, of course, is VGC 16 when there were uh, restricted Pokemon. But in general, the last time we had a format like VGC 18, which is going to be very interesting, Landorus dominated usage. It was extremely popular and for good reason. So um, what do you need to know about Landorus? Why is it so good? Uh, the first thing is it has really, really good stats. As you can see in the bottom left corner, it has good HP, really, really amazing, like a sky high attack stat. Decent defense, which is uh, paired with its ability Intimidate, which is like one of, if not the best abilities in VGC. Um, special attack is actually somehow decent. It can be used as a special attacker. It's normally not. I think there's a small niche for it this year, but in general, special attacking Landorus is not super common. Um, not amazing special defense, but honestly not terrible either, and a decent speed stat. So the real thing is that Landorus has pretty good stats across the board with an amazing attack stat, uh, one of the best abilities in the game, and pretty good typing. Ground and flying gives it lots, and lots of resistances uh, and immunities to ground, resistance to fighting, um, neutral versus rock, immune to electric. So just like good overall typing. Uh, ground hits really really hard and Earthquake is an amazing move, and it also, just with its amazing attack stat, which is one of the highest in the game, especially one of the highest legal ones in the game, it's just, like, really incredible. So, um, that's kind of like a summary of Landorus. Uh, the moves, like, basically, not all of these moves are extremely viable, but this is kind of looking at Landorus, what I would expect, all of its primary options. Of course, there's some things on here, or that aren't, that aren't on here, that, um, are options like Hidden Power Ice, and maybe Hidden Power Fire, or, like, Earth Power and stuff, but for the most part... I think this covers it. Uh, as you can see, Earthquake, U-Turn, uh, Rock Slide, Knock Off, Fly, Superpower are the moves that I expect the most um, on Landorus, except for like Protect, obviously. And then you also have the option of like Sludge Bomb if you see Landorus with, type of, with like Tapu Bulu on the team. Sludge Bomb is an option. Um, Sword Dance if you want to boost. Substitute's actually not bad this year, although it's not amazing. Rock Polish is an option. Gravity has a niche. Calm Mind if it's a special attacking Landorus, so that's probably not very common. And of course, there's always the option of Fissure. Somebody every year that it's legal runs Fissure Landorus with Assault Vest or Choice Scarf for something um and it is an option there's also like role play with no guard but that's not super popular so um yeah that's kind of like the summary for landorus the only other thing is that the items that i expect to see most on landorus t are the choice scarf item um which is probably the least common i would expect but i'm not sure yet uh, it, it, like it depends on what people want to use the assault vest item raising its special defense at the cost of only using attacking moves landorus doesn't suffer too much from that from not being able to use protect flying emz and ground emz for offensive firepower so um yeah, normally on a team, Landorus, Landorus is, like, part of the reason it's so popular is it's, it's extremely versatile. Um, with Intimidate, it's, like, it can be a bulky Pokemon. It can also, with these strong offensive items, it can be a sweeper. Um, with Assault Vest, it can be just, like, a Pokemon that's disruptive with U-Turn and Knock Off and Rock Slide, as well as strong, like, Earthquake and Super Power. Um, and the real thing to keep in mind is because Landorus has so many options, like, the sets that I'm going to show you, like, you'll need to keep in mind that they're not, like, they're not, like, you know, objectively the best possible sets. Like, you're gonna have to mix and match, you're gonna have to experiment with EVs, you're gonna have to experiment with moves and items to see if you want to use Landorus, if you think Landorus is right for your team, you're gonna have to mess around to see, um, what what is best for your team because a lot of how you use landorus is team dependent you know like the best set for your, your landorus is probably going to depend on the other pokemon um it's interesting because although it's such a powerhouse it often like it manages to play like a supporting role in teams as well pri like primarily because of intimidate so yeah that's kind of something to keep in mind i think the sets that i have are pretty good starting points if you want to try out using landorus but of course everything's subject to change and a lot depends on your team so with that in mind let's jump into the first set um this is probably the most basic set that we have here. It's Fly and EMZ, uh, Protect, Earthquake, Fly, and U-Turn with maximum attack, maximum speed, and an adamant nature with 4 in HP. Uh, ability is Intimidate. That's the only ability... Um... Does it have? I don't think it has a hidden, a hidden ability that's legal. The, the base form does, but not the theory form. So, um, basically, how do you use this one? It's, it's primarily a bulky nuke. You abuse Intimidate, you abuse um, Fly and Earthquake have really good coverage, primarily because the things that resist flying, for example, Electric, um, Rock, Steel, are all weak to ground, so that's pretty threatening. Um, I personally favor U-Turn because uh, versus Pokemon like Cresselia, for example, it's nice to be able to get a little bit of damage and switch out because Landorus and, like, versus a full health Cresselia really doesn't want to um, fight against that. Um, yeah, basically, like, you're trying to take advantage of Landorus' decent speed and its insane attack stat to just really fire off, like, an incredibly powerful move. Um, Fly is an incredibly powerful move when boosted by Flanny MZ. Um, 
What's cool is that like Landorus isn't KO'd by other Landorus after Intimidate, um, but it does do quite a bit of damage. So basically, like the reason why I have max speed on this Landorus is because if you're using Fly and EMZ, there's a good chance you can hit other Landorus. And if you can chip it with like Tapu Koko Dazzling Gleam or just like having it switch into like if you had Rock Slide over U-turn on this set, you could use that. Um, it's cool to go first because even if they switch in and like the you're intimidated and, and they're not, if you're faster and you've done like a decent bit of damage, or like just like if you do like twenty percent first, even after intimidate, your fly can KO them if they're not invested. So um, that's why I have max speed on this set. Of course, you can go less. Like it, it all depends on your team. Um, what's cool is that this if, if if you're up against a Tapu Lele and they have no investment in bulk, which is unlikely. Um, but if that's the case, even after intimidate, Landorus actually KOs Tapu Lele, which is I think pretty funny. Um, uh, Life Orb Dazzling Gleam from Tapu Koko is a 3 hit KO versus the spread, and, um, yeah, I've already mentioned why we have max speed. Some other options, um, you can go bulkier if you want, I, the next set that we have here, uh, that's coming up is a bulkier Landorus T spread, and so you could actually mix and match, like, you can run more bulk on the Flying DMZ, you can run less bulk on, spoilers, the Ground DMZ, um, that's definitely an option, I personally... I personally am a player who generally favors bulk, but that's sometimes a detriment to like my sometimes like max attack, max speed is all you need. So um, keep that. You're gonna have to test, you know, when you're when you're experimenting with this. So, but bulk, but like running a bulkier landerus is definitely an option. Um, you can put sword dance over U-turn. Um, I think that's like viable. It depends. Like it depends on if you have speed control, honestly. Like if you have like lots of good, if you have, like thunder wave and icy wind and stuff. Like I think sword dance can be okay on this set just because boosted landerus is really really strong, especially with a Z crystal. Um, but it, it does depend on your team, because Landorus, although it's fast, like, it's not... There's a lot of Pokemon in the metagame that should outspeed it, so... Um, with that in mind, I wouldn't put Swords Dance unless, like, you have good support for Landorus. Or if you have, like, a, like good, like, redirection, like, Amoongus, for example, and Cresselia are probably good partners, as most people who played VGC 15 probably know. Um, same thing with Substitute. Substitute's kind of like Swords Dance in that, like, you're, you're like... You're still staying in, um, but I like substitute personally because it's like lower risk. Um, if you substitute and they only have one Pokemon that can break the sub, or you like you like you threaten one of their Pokemon with, with another option. Like in the worst case, you trade twenty five percent of your HP, but in the best case, um, you get a free substitute. It's kind of similar to how Cartano could be used in VG seventeen, um, although Landorus is a lot bulkier um, and benefits more from switching out than Cartano did because of Intimidate. But nonetheless, I still think substitute is a viable option. Um, speed stats there, just so you guys um, can see it. And yeah, let's go to set three. Oops. Or set two, sorry. There we go. Okay, so Groundium. So this this is a spread that's a lot bulkier, as you can see. Um, let me pull up my calcs. Okay, so basically the idea here is that Landorus, as you can see, we're not really invested very much in the attack stat, um, which might seem strange because Landorus has such high such a high attack stat, but that allows you to do a lot of different things with your investment. So, um, 244 in HP, 4 in attack, 4 defense, 76 special defense, 180, 180 speed. Um, speed, let's start off with the, this because that's the easiest. It hits a speed stat of 134. That means after Icy Wind, this is intended to be used with Icy Wind, um, or, Thund or, um, or Bulldoze, or Rock Tomb, or... Um, anything that lowers the opponent's speed stat by one. Uh, that's cool because basically it lets Landorus T outspeed Tapu Koko and Mega Gengar. Uh, and Crobat? Is Crobat base 130 or whatever? I think it is. Um, yeah, basically anything that hits 200 speed stat with this much investment, Landorus can outspeed after an Icy Wind. If you don't have Icy Wind, you can actually drop the speed or you can run more. It's up to you. Um, if you want more attack. Um, but yeah, this, this spread might seem like a little bit strange because you're not really investing in Landorus' high attack stat, but because Landorus already has such a, like a, a massive attack stat, you're able to do a lot more things with that investment that you could have, um, that you could have, that you wouldn't, like, be able to do if you invested in attack. So, if you're thinking that, like, with only 4 in attack, Landorus is kind of weak, just to give you some context, 4 attack adamant Landorus has the exact same attack stat as Jolly Maximum uh, Investment Garchomp. So, for anyone who played VGC 17 and is aware of... Uh, how powerful Garchomp was. Landers, this Groundium Z Earthquake hits exactly as hard, but in return you get like a lot more bulk and you get Intimidate. So, um, I'm, I EV this Landorus T, the specific investment, um, I put like a little bit in Special Defense because that allows um, Landorus T to survive Specs, Tepofini, Muddy Water 100% of the time. It's never, um, it's never KO'd by that. Uh, Life Orb Tepu Koko Dazzling Gleam has a 59% chance to 3 hit KO. That means that most of the time it's going to 3 hit KO, but there's actually a chance that it doesn't. Um, but really the important thing is that this spread makes Specs, Tapu Koko, Dazzling Gleam always 3 hit KO. So even if they have Tapu Koko and you want to switch in your, in your Landorus, as long as they don't have Hidden Power Ice or Z, or like Fairy Z, um, which I don't think will be super common this year, just like from my intuition. Um, but yeah, basically as long as they don't have Hidden Power Ice or Fairy MZ or some other strange thing, um, you should be like pretty safe to switch Landorus in because even if they're Choice Specs, you, like, it's not like they, you, like they can call that use Dazzling Gleam and then KO you next turn. Like you're guaranteed to be 3 hit KO'd by... Specs, Tepakoko, Dazzling Gleam. Um, this lives Timid, Z-Psychic, 
uh, from Tapu Lele if it's not in terrain, which isn't the most impressive thing. Like, obviously, I know that, like, Timid and, like, out of terrain, but it's still a really powerful move. Um, and if you have, like, Tapu Fini or even Tapu Koko or Tapu Bulu, I don't personally recommend Tapu Bulu with Landorus T unless you're going special. Um, but if you did, that's something to keep in mind. It's like, just Tapu Lele is actually, like, pretty strong. Um, at the moment, it doesn't live Aegislash's Z move. It only lives at, like, 38% of the time, but you can drop you can drop stats. Like, it all depends on your team, and, all, and it all depends on the metagame and what you want. So, you can you can mess around with these EVs. You can drop speed. You can drop... Um, you actually can't drop attack on the set because you don't have any left. But if you wanted to, like, always live Aegislash, or Aegislash is a problem, you can drop some speed and put it into bulk. Um, max special attack Heatra and Heatwave is a 3 at KO, uh, which is cool. Um, Kangaskhan after return, Mega Kangaskhan, is a 3 at KO, which is cool. Sorry, Kangaskhan return after Intimidate is a 3 at KO. Um, Salamence Hyper Voice is a 3 KO, and Maximum Special Attack Cresselia Ice Beam never KOs, which is not true on the other set. So, the bulk really gets you a long way, as maybe you can hear from those calcs. Um, I personally, as I mentioned, favor bulk. This, this Landorus is cool because it plays kind of a middle ground, um, where it can be bulky, it's a supporter, but it also can hit, it hits really hard, like, once, and then has, like, good supporting moves. Otherwise, you turn and knock off great moves. Protect, obviously, is not probably the best move in VGC. Um, so you have the best move in VGC, in my opinion, and the best ability in VGC, in my opinion, um, on one Pokemon. Though, of course, that's any Pokemon with Intimidate and Protect, but nonetheless, that's not really the point. Um, knockoff is cool because you can take items. I haven't really talked about knockoff. U-turn is, is good because when you're threatened by something, you can scout for switches, and you also just get to switch out yourself as long as you're faster, which is also part of why investing in speed is cool. Um, in terms of other options for this set, you can put more attack if you want. Uh, you, you have to drop speed for that, or you can drop bulk if you want. Um, you could put Sword Dance over Knockoff, uh, or over U-Turn as well. Mm, I'm, like, not crazy about that idea on a set like this, but it is possible because you're so bulky. It's just that, like, Pokemon like Cresselia are, like, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's definitely an option. You should, you can experiment with it, with that, um, if it's, if that's appealing to you. Um, you can put Flyanium over Groundium, which is cool. Uh, like I mentioned, you can use this spread with the Flying Z spread. You can use this spread. You can use Groundium Z with the Flying Z spread. You can mess around with it. Um, and you could put Superpower or Rock Slide as well over Knockoff or U-Turn. Um, I personally would keep U-Turn on a set like this, but it's, it's definitely an option that you have. Um, Superpower hits, like, Tyranitar for harder damage. Um, if you don't want to use your Z-Crystal against Shuka Heatran, eh, never mind. That's actually stupid. But, like, Superpower has some uses. Like, Tyranitar is a big one. Um, and Kartana, it would hit harder. Um, if you don't want to use your Z Crystal, Superpower has uses. We'll have to see what like how the metagame actually develops before like we see exactly how much. But I don't think Superpower is like bad by any means. So, yeah, speed stats one thirty four. We're gonna talk about that. Let's move on. Set three. Um, last set we have here is Assault Vest. So, I I was like really torn on what to do with the EVs on this one. So I just gave you guys like three options. <laughs> um, first EVs I have are two forty four HP, twelve special defense, maximum speed. Um, idea there is you're bulky and you're fast. You don't have very much offense, but you're playing this as like an extremely bulky support role. So you have knockoff, um, you have earthquake, you have U-turn, and you have rock slide. So being fast is really good for rock slide. Uh, for anyone who knows how that move works, knockoff is just a great attack in general, taking away Pokemon's items. U-turn is cool for pivoting and getting landers out and getting other things in safely. And earthquake is just like a strong stab move. Um, of course, there is the option of just going um, offensive. All these all these guys are adamant. Um, the, the option of going offensive you can just do max attack max speed um you can make lander super bulky with assault vest which personally like is really appealing to me but you do have to give up like long story short you have to choose you're like forced to choose two of attack speed and bulk like you get decent you get good regardless right even if you don't invest in speed you're not that slow like you'll still have speed uninvested rotoms and like uninvested cresselia and even like heatran and like some metagross or like most metagross i would assume um so it's like not it's not the end of the world if you don't invest but by investing in bulk, you can be, like, incredibly, incredibly bulky, and by investing in speed, you can be faster than a lot of stuff. You can be faster than bulky Landorus, you can be faster than, um, faster, like, Rotom, faster Heatran, like, things, basically, you can be faster than anything that, like, wants to be around 134. Um, if you want to go max speed, you can be faster than Coco and Gengar after Icy Wind if you want to go 180 speed. Like, you have choices, basically. Um, so it's really, it's really up to you. Um, first EV spread is super bulky, uh, max HP, 12 such events, max speed. Um, next EV spread is just standard offensive, and last EV spread is kind of like, a, like, if you want the crazy bulk, but you don't want, or you want, like, a little bit more attack, um, that last spread is for you. Max HP, or 244 HP, 68 attack, 4 defense, 12 special defense, and 180 speed. Um, idea here is that, yeah, you're just playing it as, like, with the Solfest Landers is just, like, super, super bulky, um, which is pretty cool, honestly. Like, it, like, some calcs, for example, for, um, for max HP, 12 special defense, um, let's see. If you, if... Tapu Fini doesn't have choice specs. Muddy Water, super effective Muddy Water is always a 3 hit KO. Life Orb Tapu Coco Dazzling Gleam is a 5 hit KO. They have to hit with 5 Dazzling Gleams of Life Orb in order to KO you, which is like nuts. Um, Aegislash Shadow Ball is a 3 hit KO. That's true even without any investment in bulk, but you get a little bulkier if you invest in bulk. 
Heatran Heat Wave is a four hit KO with you, if you invest in bulk. Icy Wind from Cresselia with uh with no investment is a five hit KO. So they have to hit you five times with a four times effective move. Sorry, this is probably like some jargon, but yeah, Icy Wind from Cresselia is a five hit KO. Um, Ice Beam if they have no investment is a good chance for three hit KO. So even like super effective Ice Beam might not even two hit KO your Landorus. Um, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like basically, in the other options, like you pick two. You can have attack, you can have speed, and you can have like incredible bulk. Um, pretty much regardless, Landers is going to be pretty good. It depends on your team, as I've been saying a lot. Um, you can put superpower on the set of a knockoff. My instinct says knockoff is better at the moment. Oh, Kangaskhan, right? That's like the big thing for superpower. Superpower hits Kangaskhan way harder, and like with some prior damage, you can actually like KO it. Um, so like people ran Rocky Helmet and Moongus last year, and like that plus Landorus T with superpower with Assault Vest was like pretty popular. Um, yeah, and I've written there like you can just do max attack, max speed. Actually, yeah, I didn't realize that I had that up there already. Um, I think I'm missing the max attack, max bulk one. Like you can do max attack, like 244 HP, and then 12 special defense, and have zero speed. Or like you know you can go anywhere you want. But that's yeah, that's basically my my initial um, impression. So lastly, what if you want to counter Landorus, right? And don't geek out just because there's Landorus on the screen. I know it looks funny. Um, First, these are like the three things that came to the top, like top of my head um, when it comes to countering Landorus. Cresselia is really good. It gets access to ice moves, both icy wind and ice beam. Most most Cresselia will have an ice move um, because Landorus is grounded flying. It's four times weak to ice, which makes using an ice move on it pretty effective, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, Cresselia Psychic type doesn't make it weak to U-turn, but it's just like an incredibly bulky Pokemon. So even though it's weak to U-turn, it like Landorus T normally can't do that much. Um, yeah, and with ice type coverage, and also Trick Room is pretty big. Like if you use Trick Room on Cresselia, which probably quite a few of them will. Um, it lets you reverse the speed stats, and so therefore, like, if you have a slower team, you can take advantage of Landorus that way. Um, Rotom Wash is probably one of the best counters to Landorus, although knockoff can be annoying, but it's immune to ground, um, it's, it's, like, really bulky, it's not, it's not as bulky as Cresselia, but honestly, like, nothing is. Uh, it has water type coverage to hit Landorus, which is super effective, it resists flying, so even, like, this, like, for example, with Cresselia, you could actually, in theory, like, chip it down low enough to KO with the Z flying, but with Rotom, it's gonna be a lot harder because it resists it, um, although I haven't run calcs on that, so I, I'll need to double check that, like, because it's possible that Rotom is, like, half as, half as defensive is Chris Elias, so it does the same amount, but regardless, Rotom's a really good switch in. Um, Will O Wisp is pretty amazing for stopping Landorus. Like, Hydro Pump is not, its accuracy isn't amazing, and like, um, if you run like some of the bulk that I've listed, you can live most Rotom's Hydro Pump, but with Will O Wisp, you can, you can intimidate it, you still have to deal with, uh, you can, sorry, you can weaken it with Will O Wisp. Um, you still have to deal with Intimidate, which is part of the reason why Landorus is so good, but it, offensively, it really, uh, takes away a lot of his power. Um, and lastly, Landers T is a pretty good answer to Landers T, just because, as I mentioned, like after Intimidate, Z Fly doesn't KO. Um, Landers has like knockoff to hit other Landers and Rock Slide, but like after Intimidate, because as you've seen, Landers is like pretty good bulk. Um, it doesn't do that much damage at all. So Landorus is a good counter. If you wanted to use a Landorus that like really beat other Landorus, you could use Hidden Power Ice. You could also run. I personally think that's something we might see at some point. Um, is the 50% Berry, the Super Citrus Berry, um, Landorus T, because that way like you could use your Landorus T to switch into other Landorus T, not fearing Z Fly, because even if they Z Fly, Z flew. Z flied? I don't know. <laughs> Even if they use Z fly on your Landorus T, you could like take, you know, 80% and then heal 50% back and now they don't have an item, you don't have an item, but they're intimidated and um yeah, like you like you like use their Z move, which is like pretty valuable in my opinion. So um I definitely think we'll be seeing 50% Landorus at some point throughout the year, but since I like I'm not super familiar with it, I didn't include it in the guide. But yeah, that's it. So that, that's kind of my quick summary to Landorus T. Of course, um, I'm not an expert in it yet. I haven't played a ton of games, but these are my first impressions. This is kind of like the first sets that I would use um, when testing Landorus T. So um, I know this is a new series. So if you have feedback, I'd be super happy to appreciate it. Let me know in the comments down below what Pokemon you want me to cover next, because there's a whole lot of new Pokemon to cover, and I'm really excited to do it. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. Um, I'm going to be doing a heck of guides. There's going to be it's going to be guide city up in here. So um, yeah, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more, if you want to hear more of my uh, less than eloquent prose. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.